Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Mitch. Thank you, James, for this very interesting uh, presentation. My presentation is actually a continuation of theirs, um, going more into depth of the exploration of the psychotherapeutic value of ayahuasca. Um, I want to let you know also that English is my third language, so asking you for a little bit of patience if it's not completely fluent. Um, I'm presenting the main results of my doctoral dissertation, uh, which is on the therapeutic use of ayahuasca for addiction treatment, uh, which uh, I presented in the University of Heidelberg. Um, I'd like to, oops, let me see how this works. How does this work? Like this? Okay. I'd like to start contextualizing ayahuasca-assisted addiction treatment as a form of treatment assisted by psychedelic plants based in indigenous medical practices. Uh, you can find um, the use of psychedelic plants for the treatment of addiction in the context of the Native American church in USA and Canada and among indigenous practices in Mexico, you can find the use of Wachuma, San Pedro cactus, in the Andes for the treatment of addiction. Uh, you can find the use of psilocybin mushrooms uh, in the mountains of Mexico for the treatment of addiction. And uh, ayahuasca has come to attention very much among all those different ayahuasca using groups in many, many anecdotal reports that have been presented that it might have uh, enormous therapeutic potential for the treatment of addiction. Through the intercultural transference uh, of ayahuasca in the last decades, uh, ayahuasca has spread worldwide and uh, the ritual practice have been transforming in this process. And, uh, Today you'll find different ritual forms offered by indigenous healers, by psychotherapists, medical doctors, or religious or shamanic hybrid ayahuasca circles with the intention of attending uh, patients uh, with substance dependency issues. And uh, there's kind of a common notion within the Brazilian ayahuasca religion that ayahuasca heals substance dependency. And based on this experience, there's uh, several therapeutic projects that have been developed in countries including Peru, Argentina, Colombia, and in Brazil, although in Brazil due to legal restrictions, the such efforts are reframed as uh, uh, humanitarian efforts. The therapeutic effects occur as secondary to a religious ritual. Uh, Takivasi has, that's why I put a picture, is one of the pioneering projects. Jack Mabit has exposed their concept in the morning, uh, combining in a multidisciplinary way indigenous uh, Amazonian use of ayahuasca and modern psychotherapy. There is, however, many other projects uh, among this is IDEA, uh, which will present it in this afternoon too. and others that uh, prefer remain anonymous who do similar work. So I have identified following modalities of ayahuasca-assisted addiction treatment in my study. There is this informal support where um, the therapeutic effects uh, of ayahuasca occur secondary to a religious practice. Then there are outpatients practice uh, of, that offer monthly ayahuasca sessions as a complement to a regular therapeutic program, which can be a psychotherapeutic program or can be an indigenous medicine-based program. And then there's inpatient programs of varying lengths, which offer regular ayahuasca sessions as an integral part of the therapy. It's important to note that the structural aspects and the professionalism uh, worry considerably about, among those projects. So in uh, the context of my doctoral dissertation, I conducted uh, 15 semi-structured interviews with mental health professionals 
were expert both in the therapeutic use of ayahuasca and substance dependency treatment. I also conducted a semi-structured interview with 14 ex patients uh, three or ten years after three to ten years after their treatment conclusion and evaluated those inter interviews with qualitative content analysts according to Miles and Haberman. My main questions uh, for the study were what are the therapeutic qualities of ayahuasca reuse and which factors may influence treatment outcome? So I uh, tried to synthesize uh, some of the most relevant findings graphically. Um, in the study, the subjective experience that were relevant for recovery included interconnected body-orientated, emotional, social, insight-orientated, cognitive, spir and spiritual processes. And interestingly, uh, most of those processes mentioned are valued also in other uh, con more conventional therapeutic approaches for the treatment of addiction. There was no single kind of experience identified as the most relevant, and uh, most patients reported that change resulted from a combination of all this experience. Um, with respect to the body-orientated uh, experience, it's important to note that ayahuasca can become very physical, and this is especially important in the treatment of substance dependency, where oftentimes trauma and emotions and the abuse of the substance itself is physically rooted. Um, many exper patients experience that the vomiting, the intense purging, provided detoxification in their subjective experience that the vomiting, the purging, provided anti-craving, and that they just got a more in-depth connection with their physical body, again, appreciating what it's like to feel healthy and feel good. Uh, on the emotional level, um, patients reported the release of psychological burdens, of traumatic memories, uh, which they could relive, but from a different perspective, so without being involved emotionally. They could go through them and, like this, integrate them. Uh, they could contact blocked emotions or experience emotions they have never experienced uh, and could forgive themselves or others. Another important aspect that maybe I could have given even a uh, own section creating a petal of five, uh, is, is the social area. Ayahuasca has a strong social function, uh, creates uh, identification with the group where ayahuasca is taken. So this can be very positive if this group has health-orientated values, creating what uh, Sigi Jung has called the protective wall of human community, kind of uh, something that Alcoholics Anonymous is also based on and many self-help groups creating a new positive social context. And ayahuasca can be a facilitator for this, which is, I think, one of the factors why uh, there are so many reports of overcoming substance dependency in the Brazilian ayahuasca churches. Then on a cognitive level, insight-orientated level, uh, it's very common of substance dependence individuals to report that they have been confronted with their addiction and um, have gained insights into maladaptive psychological patterns, that they got more awareness of themselves, or that they received very precise therapeutic instructions that when then later uh, realized uh, turned out to be very relevant for the recovery. Also, it, it was not only the awareness of psychological deficits, but also the awareness of positive personal resources they had that was important for making the next step into recovery. Another very important uh, part of the experience were transpersonal experience. Um, 
many patients reported uh, being uh, dead, experienced their death, being at the graveyard, and through death being reconfronted with what life means and what they are doing with their lives. So that was in many times very transformative. Uh, another type of transformative experience were peak experience, uh, getting in contact with the divine, getting in contact with the universe, getting in contact with their soul, with something sacred, finding meaning in life, finding uh, and rediscovering the value of life. Uh, spiritual and energetic healings were also reported. Of course, uh, visionary effects uh, are very common also uh, in relation uh, with ayahuasca, but uh, from a therapeutic view, they are more secondary. Only when they have personal meaning, they can become therapeutically re relevant. So it's, it's the meaning, it's not what kind of experience, it's what does it mean subjectively for the patient. I want to share a few uh, patient citations with you on those ex uh, aspects I uh, previously mentioned. Um, those are translation from interviews that have been conducted in Spanish, so that's my, why the English might sound a, really, a little strange to you. I heard to learn to forgive myself, and forgive myself, and more than anything, forgive my family. This was needed for getting well. I realized things I had done in my life to myself and others and asked myself, how could I have done that? And at that moment, I expelled everything while I vomited or cried, and then these things vanished. I carried a giant bag of guilt, but there, in the ayahuasca ceremony, I got rid of the guilt and I felt better. It was really hard for me. I cried a lot for the things I had done, but now I'm good. That's very common, the patient said, though this experience were very hard, they were really tough. It was like the worst thing I experienced, but they were helpful. And it's very common that emotional catharsis occurs while vomiting. Another common citation was that ayahuasca provides an inner mirror that allows you to go beyond your own denial. Ayahuasca showed me that I did not know myself. I saw myself through a camera or mirror, and I was looking at myself, as if being in the presence of somebody who knows exactly who I am and how I felt and knew what I was doing in my life. It was common also to become confronted with the addiction. The plan showed me I was trapped in my alcoholism, that I was a slave to alcohol. The downward path on which I was going, the alcoholism, and the other path which I could choose to go was revealed to me. I realized hand in hand with my alcoholism was my idleness, my rage, my superficiality, my egoism. I could say that the ayahuasca intake was touching my insights and showing me what I was doing wrong. The way in which these things revealed to, were to, revealed to me was almost shocking, very precise and so wise that it left no room for doubt, my change and need for recovery. Many patients reported also spiritual renewal, such as Alonso, all those names are pseudonyms, by the way. It was the most profound spiritual awakening to come in face with my divine self, with in all of us. The notions of God, life, and love become a direct experience of my inner self, and for the first time I could dialogue with this spiritual force. This was tremendously empowering and reassuring to my spiritual self. A sense of wonder and perfection overcame me, and well-being seemed the natural way to be. Uh, interestingly, uh, many patients reported that ayahuasca had anti-craving effects, and those were related oftentimes with uh, meaningful personal or spiritual experiences. Such as Steve who comments, after the first ayahuasca session, I was not drinking any alcohol for two weeks. It was not even of my mind. Not drinking came naturally. There was no void that needed to be filled anymore. I found that life had a meaning. It was something very common. I go on because 
like to go through all the slides. <laughs> uh, also energetic and uh, more uh, spiritual aspects common to indigenous medicine were reported, where we don't have the natural framework in Western psychology to explain. Um, the effects of ayahuasca uh, regarding to which factors uh, will influence treatment outcome, it's important to know that the effects of ayahuasca as other psychedelics depend on the doses, the set, and the setting, and the long-term effect depend on the integration. How is uh, experience integrated psychologically and implemented into life? Uh, and with the doses, I'm also including the composition of ayahuasca, which may have an effect too in how it's preferred. With the set, it's the psychological structure, the setup, which intention, which motivation, which predisposition, previous experience and cultural factors come with the individual who is going to take the ayahuasca. And the setting is which kind of ritual context contains the experience. I've uh, created a little graph of other factors that influence treatment outcome that are all related to substance, set, setting, and integration. Integration I put in the center because it's kind of what binds the experience together and what translates the experience into long-term outcomes in the individuals. Uh, with regards to variables related to the set, it's important to note that uh, Ayahuasca might not be the ideal treatment strategy for everybody. And there's aspects that ayahuasca will probably not attend to, such as ego structural deficiency uh, or uh, some kinds of personality disorders. Uh, with regards to motivation, uh, it's important that although motivation may influence treatment outcomes strongly, Several of the patients I interviewed got the, inf uh, the motivation for initiating a treatment through a transformative and confrontative ayahuasca experience. Um, with regards to the variables related to the context, to the setting, I won't go through the details because we don't have enough time, but I feel that one very relevant aspect to mention is the aftercare, the quality of the aftercare and the, the, how it's sustained. Because uh, if this uh, variable is not taken care of, there is many, many relapses. Sometimes therapeutically, uh, therapeutic aftercare can be replaced by a supportive community context, such as provided by the ayahuasca communities, the ayahuasca churches. Uh, a very relevant uh, aspect, as I mentioned before, is the integration, and psychotherapy can be an important factor for throughout integration. As uh, one patient commented, ayahuasca is no magic. I had to face my psychologist with all my baggage and shame and misery. The plan would show me, and then we would work through everything. The process with my therapist was fundamental. I believe that if one takes the plan without therapeutic support, it's like finding a treasure, but not the key to open it. Psychotherapy was good in helping me to interpret, completely accept, and implement what the plan was teaching me. And this, I think, is an aspect that is often neglected in neo-shamanic uh, ayahuasca circles where there's not much continuity. In indigenous community, the ayahuasca is available, but in new context, it's something to take care of. I need to go fast <laughs> through the role of ritual, which is so important for the containment, the guidance of the non ordinary state of consciousness and for the focus of the experience, so the skill of the facilitator and how the ritual are guided can make a very important change. I also want to add, although ayahuasca might have pharmacological uh, properties for changing addictive mindset, we should not understand ayahuasca as a pharmacological intervention, but as a ritual intervention with basis in indigenous medicine 
uh, regard, with regard to the therapeutic value, uh, which was identified in the study, um, combining the um, statements of interviewed therapists and patients, I found following aspects. Less drug craving or repulsion to drug intake, the overcoming of dysfunctional psychological patterns and psychological growth, increased self-awareness, spiritual renewal, restructuring of value systems, and new life perspective. It's, however, very important to know that ayahuasca is not a panacea. It's only a therapeutic tool, which can have positive or negative outcomes, depending on who uses it, with which intentions, and in which context. And my final thoughts are very similar to those of the previous speakers. Uh, in well-structured settings, ayahuasca experience can contribute to the process of recovery from substance dependency by triggering interrelated physical, psychological, and spiritual processes that are valued in various existing therapeutic approaches to addiction treatment. The findings of the study indicate that for some patients, ayahuasca can be an effective and reasonable safe therapeutic tool for treating substance dependence. These results, however, are preliminary and need to be verified through studies that involve systematic data collection with standardized outcome measures. And I think Brian Rush, in, late in the afternoon, we are going to talk about this part. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, the microphone's right up here, so please come up. Yeah, um, you talk that ayahuasca is just um, a tool, a therapeutic tool that can have a positive or negative results. I would like to know more about the negative results ayahuasca can have. Aham. Uh -huh. In a context that is not well contained as an amplifier of consciousness, uh, ayahuasca can negatively affect uh, psychologically a person, it can uh, lead to paranoia, to um, disorientation, can lead to trauma, psychological trauma if somebody is abused during an unholy state of consciousness or it's just not contained, or a, a person who had a trauma in early childhood and goes through a non-contained ayahuasca experience can be re-traumatized. Mm -hmm. Things like this. Okay. And then there's also uh, the, all the other part in traditional indigenous medicines. There's uh, plants, there's a, like the like of plants to heal and plants to harm. And ayahuasca in indigenous traditional medicine is used for both. So there's also this energetic part. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Anya, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit to, to the audience about what your NGO Nierica is. And also something that uh, while putting the track together, I, I ask myself, uh, we have so many presentations about ayahuasca, and ayahuasca is foreign to the USA. And we have, I don't think, any presentation about peyote in this whole conference. So uh, I was wondering if you, if you have any thoughts on, on why ayahuasca potentials are so uh, highly uh, developed and regarded, and talk anything about the, the absence of peyote and your work also with peyote and Yerika and give a compliment to the absence of, of peyote narratives in, in this conference. <laughs> Thank you, Via. And Nierica is a Mexican-based nonprofit organization with the aim of preserving the tradition of the indigenous use of sacred plants. And uh, our next uh, step is exploring more the therapeutic potential of peyote. Um, I personally believe uh, ayahuasca has been so well explored because ayahuasca has spread all over to the West. And the scientific uh, exploration usually comes from Western scientists and not so much from indigenous uh, people who partake of the medicine. Um, 
also, um, I think ayahuasca um, has been explored uh, in, in this sense because uh, people wanted to, to find a legal proof for uh, the use of this medicine in non-indigenous context. With peyote, this has not happened so far. Um, from what I know, there is um, Joseph Calabrese who has uh, intensively um, studied the use of peyote for addiction treatment among indigenous uh, people in the United States, uh, in the Diné population specifically. Um, what he writes about uh, how peyote helps people to overcome substance dependency is very similar to what uh, people relate with relation to ayahuasca experience. It's, um, I think that peyote in, in, the effect, in, in the end has a very similar therapeutic potential uh, in the treatment of addiction and it should be definitely further explored. Next question. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, one of your report uh, was about uh, integration of experience. Uh, can you tell more about how how um, how that works in a tribe? Like, uh, what will happen after the ceremony? Uh, and how how long uh, you need time to integrate experience before the next ceremony? Or because sometimes I th I I um, somebody tell me that. Uh, the work uh, can be on the next day, but what's about the integration of of, from, of the of the ceremony? Mm -hmm. um, in indigenous societies, that was your first yeah. action yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, question. No? How does integration work? Uh, ayahuasca in indigenous societies who use ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is integrated into the society. So many, several people of a village are in the ayahuasca ceremony in the night, and the integration occurs naturally to talking with uh, um, traditional healer or with other participants who were there, because they oftentimes know about the states of consciousness that one can touch with ayahuasca. And then there's somehow like this commitment within the community to implement what's there because that's the perp what's the purpose of taking those plans is getting like a vision or learning something. And this what is learned needs to be like implemented again uh, with uh, respect um, to, you, you asked me how frequent or how soon after one yeah, ceremony yeah, 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 should yeah. I uh, take ayahuasca yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. I think this um, is very individually different. Uh, I personally believe that if people had a very strong ayahuasca experience, they should first integrate it, assimilate it, uh, before they go to the next uh, experience. Because the important part is what do I bring from the experience into my life again? And how much can I take of things to integrate and implement at once? So I feel that it's very individually. There's, there's no rule about it. Maybe if somebody didn't feel anything in one session, he wants to participate the day after and see if now he... Uh, finds the answer to what he or she is seeking for. Okay, we have time for Thank one you. more very quick question. Very short. Quick question. Uh, you mentioned personality disorders that maybe would not benefit from ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. which, which ones? Just curious. Yeah, there is uh, some types of personality that always like blame other people instead of uh, seeing the problems in themselves and they uh, who are like consciously um, resistant to self-exploration and they can maintain this resistance strong even the, under the influence of ayahuasca. So uh, they like constantly avoid seeing themselves. So um, if uh, a, a person is structured in this way, it, made more, it would make maybe more sense 
for him or for her to undergo a different kind, more confrontative, more verbal, or other kind of psychotherapy than continuing to seeking the change in attending ayahuasca ceremonies. Like okay. Very narcissistic people sometimes also don't respond so well to ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anya. We'll have to cut it off there. Thank you.